York's governor admits he made a boo-boo and Republicans agree waterboarding is not torture. Plus, I've got some breaking news about Southwest Airlines. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Renee, and you are about to hear some top national stories from GetTheDaily.com. In the breaking news, Southwest Airlines will have 41 planes from its fleet grounded after it was discovered they have been skirting crucial maintenance guidelines. Last week, federal regulators announced they will seek a civil penalty of $10.2 million against the airline for failing to inspect some of their older planes. And then, if that wasn't bad enough failing to inspect them, they flew them with passengers before other inspections were completed. It is now being speculated that criminal charges could be brought against the company for blatantly ignoring safety violations in order to keep their flight schedule on time. I mean, come on, I'm all for on-schedule flights, but I would like to arrive on time and alive. I'll have more details on this story as they emerge. And in a shocking press conference this morning, New York Governor Elliot Spitzer has officially resigned from office. He will step down at the end of the week and Lieutenant Governor David Patterson will take over his responsibilities beginning Monday, March 17th. Now, not only will it mark a shameful moment for Spitzer, but a momentous one for Patterson as he will become the first African-American governor of New York. Spitzer's resignation comes after it was exposed in a federal investigation that he was a frequent user of a prostitution ring called the Emperor's Club. Just 48 hours after it was publicized that tens of thousands of dollars went to this high-priced hooker service, the people of New York loudly called for his resignation, calling him a hypocrite for using services he publicly denounced in the past. His resignation isn't the end of the line for Spitzer. He could still face federal charges for financial crimes that he previously prosecuted himself while working in the New York Attorney General's office. Now, if that isn't the best case of irony, I don't know what is. Dirty politicians, they are just everywhere. And while the media outlets are feverishly covering Elliot Spitzer's giant mess, a little more important news is happening. Yes, ladies and gentlemen of America, our president, George W. Bush, will officially be able to veto an anti-torture bill that didn't get the majority vote needed for a veto override in the House. Now, I have talked about this bill before, but in case you haven't heard, this bill would have limited the CIA to only using interrogation methods on prisoners approved in the Army Field Manual. But now, because of a majority vote was not captured, waterboarding, electric shock, and even forced nudity will be legal as ways of questioning prisoners. Now, Republicans are mainly responsible for the death of the bill, and they're saying the original bill is filled with other side projects, like a study on the national security implications of global warming. I mean, thank God they shot that down. Global warming is just a myth anyway, isn't it? Right? What's global warming? All those Republicans, they always have the best for everyone in mind, right? Okay, you guys, so you just heard some top national stories. I'm Andrew Renee for GetTheDaily.com, and thanks for watching your online source for news.